We are here now with a symposium speaker, Susanna Herculano Huzel. Thanks for coming, Susanna. My pleasure. So, Susanna, your talk is Brain Structure, Diversity and Evolution, What Changes, What Doesn't, and What Does It Matter? Is it your talk? So, tell us about it, please. Um, so, this talk is part of a symposium about brain diversity and how neuroscientists can learn a lot from studying more than the the usual mouse and rat and maybe monkey and then the human brain. The, so one of the things that I'll say um, in my talk is how the human brain is not a large mouse brain. It actually is a large primate brain, at least in its number of neurons and the relationship to the size of the brain and how those neurons are distributed. But there actually is a tremendous amount of diversity in nature and how different, uh, what, what the different brains are, what different species can accomplish with the different brains that they have. So uh, we'll, we'll have speakers talking exactly about their experience with completely different species and their brains, of course. So, um, and those are the animals that people don't usually hear about in neuroscience. And uh, the idea of the symposium is to let neuroscientists know the tremendous amount of uh, new ideas and uh, that can be learned from working with these animals. For instance, instance the star-nosed mole, which is a small animal that has tentacles around its nose. It turns out that it can tell a lot about how the sensory cortex is organized and how it deals with sensory information. Birds, are they really less intelligent than mammals simply because they have a smaller brain. Uh, whales, they have, um, quite the contrary, they have gigantic brains. How does that come about? Does that necessarily mean that they have a lot of neurons and that they're, therefore they are highly, highly intelligent? Oh, great. So for you, why is the brain structure diversity so important in, in brain research? Because to begin with, we have to acknowledge that the human brain is just one more brain. Yes, it's the brain that studies all other brains and instead of just being studied by all the other species. So I, I personally think that if we want to understand how come it is the human brain that studies other brains and not the other way around, then we have to understand the basics. We have to understand brain diversity. What's the relationship between the size of a brain and how many cells it has and how those cells are organized in different functional areas? How that does that whole work together? So what to, to, to explain, to finally provide an answer to what is it that makes the human brain human? Well, we, we, we must look at other species. We, you have to appreciate diversity to then really be able to pinpoint that one thing that makes the human brain human. Great, so, and what is the main thing you want your audience to walk away with? This, uh, first, I, I think a sense of wonderment that uh, there's so much more to study than mice and rats and monkeys and humans. And second, that they're not all made the same way. There's a lot of diversity and that diversity has to be appreciated and has to be understood. If we really want to understand what the brain is about, we have to do a lot more than just keep studying the mouse and the rat and the monkey and the human. We have to look at other systems and um, use this, the, the opportunity of having highly specialized sensory systems, for instance, to be able to really understand how brains are organized and how they work. Thank you, thank you very much for, for coming. My pleasure.